Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello students. So in this video, we are going to study interference of light in a wedge shaped film. So what is a wedge? Wedge is nothing but there are basically there are two reflecting surfaces place something like this. So one surface is actually parallel whereas other is actually inclined at an angle alpha to the basic to the base plate. So such a kind of arrangement is called as a wedge. So we are going to find out what is the resulting interference pattern that is produced by such a kind of arrangement. So in this diagram, we are now going to see what exactly is a wedge and what are the different reflecting waves which are there, which are ultimately going to give us the interference pattern. And remember, this is a air wedge. This means the medium between the two plates which are inclined at an angle alpha is air. Let us start with it. So we have the incident ray AB which is inclined to the normal or rather it makes an angle I with the normal. Definitely at this particular point B there is going to be reflection as well as there is going to be a transmission. B R1 is actually the reflected ray. BC is actually the transmitted ray. In this case one can say that it is the refracted ray but since this is an air medium inside it will not refract more as it will do in the case of another medium which is placed inside the wedge. So this ray once again will hit the lower plate of the wedge at the point C. At this point we are having reflection. We are not showing transmission over here because we are assuming that this entire assembly is placed on a surface and which will not allow any kind of transmission. So this particular wave will once again get reflected from the point C and it will meet the top plate at the point D. At the point D once again there is a transmission as well as there is a reflection but we have not shown the reflection in this case. We are only going to focus on the transmitted wave and what we are going to have over here is nothing but the transmitted wave which is nothing but D R2. So basically we are trying to answer this particular question as to what is going to be the interference pattern that is going to be produced by the reflected rays R1 and R2. But prior to that let us consider very some important parameters regarding the geometry of this entire figure and what are those parameters let us learn more about them angle d o dash m is the angle alpha which is the wedge angle immediately you can see that this angle over here the angle between the two normals this normal which is drawn to the top surface and this normal which is drawn to the bottom surface this angle will definitely be equal to alpha. So let me add this over here which I have not done it and this angle which is going to be equal to B N and Q that also is going to be equal to alpha. Secondly your angle A B and N dash as I have already said is going to be equal to I angle of incidence which is also equal to the angle of incidence that is angle N dash B and P. After that we are having the ray over here will undergo refraction and you will have the bent beam out over here therefore your angle NBC that is NBC is going to be the angle of refraction and this angle by geometry is also going to be equal to B, D and E. Please note that we are drawing a perpendicular out over here and that's the reason why this particular angle by geometry is going to be equal to the angle of refraction. We proceed further 
and angle B C Q which is B C and Q is the exterior angle of this particular triangle which is B C N and that's the reason why it is equal to I plus alpha which is also equal to Q C and D so because this angle is going to be the angle of incidence at the lower plate and therefore this also is going to be the angle of reflection so therefore your angle of incidence and their angle of reflection is going to be the same hence your i plus alpha is equal to i plus alpha making this two angles same that is bcq and qcd furthermore you will see that this line and this line are both parallel to each other now what is this line this is nothing but the thickness your dm is nothing but the thickness and therefore you will immediately see that since this and this is parallel this is nothing but a transversal I am drawing to to this two parallel lines and since it is a transversal the alternate interior angles are going to be equal and therefore this angle which is QCD will actually be equal to CDM since this is I plus alpha therefore this is going to be equal to I plus alpha similarly there is another transversal which I am going to draw let us say CO to the two parallel lines which is QN and DO and therefore the alternate interior angles will be the same and what are those it is I plus alpha over here and over here also this is going to be equal to I plus alpha in this case one cannot say that there are alternate interior angles but rather one can say that they are corresponding angles over here so this angle and this angle are same now due to that it so happens that the base angles of the triangle CDO are equal and making it the isosceles triangle so in that case one can say that CD is actually equal to CO so all this is the basis for the derivation that we are going to do for the for finding out yeah, the derivation that we are going to do for finding out the path differences between the rays R1 and R2. Now immediately you can see that if at all I wish to find out the path difference between R1 and R2, I need to drop a perpendicular from R2 to R1 and PD is actually the perpendicular that is actually being drawn. And now I can say that the ray has traveled from B to P in the same instant the transmitted ray has actually traveled from BC to CD right and therefore I will actually consider the difference in the path between the two rays that has been transferred and that will give me the part difference so that is going to be my very first step so next we are going to find out the part difference between the two rays so let us find out what is the delta so delta which is nothing but the part difference is going to be equal to mu into bc plus cd and minus of bp so this is going to be your part difference wherein bc can once again be written as mu into be plus ec plus CD minus of BP so that is going to be your Delta let us now look at the geometry and for this let us once again refer to the figure to make it more simple let us label this particular equation as 1 let us now refer to the figure so in the figure what we have is sine of I which is going to be the angle of incidence since this is I by geometry since this is perpendicular this angle is also going to be equal to I and therefore sine of I from here is going to be the opposite side which is going to be equal to BP upon BD similarly sine of R is equal to I am taking this sign of R over here and that is going to be equal to BE 
upon the hypotenuse which is going to be equal to BT. I now apply Snell's law at this particular point and by applying the Snell's law over here I know that your mu is actually equal to sin i upon sin r applying the Snell's law at the point b you are having mu is equal to sin i upon sin of r but I already know that your sin of i is actually going to be equal to bp upon bd and this is going to be equal to BE upon BT. Hence, your mu is going to be equal to BP upon BE. Let us label this expression as expression 2. And from 2, you have a value for BP, which is going to be equal to mu times BE. And hence, we substitute this 2 in this expression and find out the next stage for the path difference which is going to be equal to BE plus we are having a EC over here and plus CD and minus of BP which is going to be turn out to mu into BE plus mu into EC plus CD minus BP which is going to be equal to mu times BE. Now this and this cancels off and I gave a very simple expression for the part difference which is going to be equal to mu into EC plus CD. So this is one expression one can say let us call this as your expression 3. Let us simplify this particular expression further because now I wish to bring in the angle alpha of the wedge as well as the thickness of the wedge. So let us now see how we can simplify this particular expression for the part difference further. So in this part what we are going to do the next thing what we are going to do is EC plus CD is actually equal to EC plus CO. And the reason is your CD and CO is actually equal because your CDO is an isosceles triangle and we have already discussed this before. It is an isosceles triangle. So due to that, in our final expression, wherever there is EC plus CD, I am going to replace that by EC plus CO. Thus, you can say that your delta is actually equal to your EC plus CO. Thus, your delta is equal to mu into EC plus CO. Now, since this is going to be equal to EC plus a CO, right? Your, the next step that you're going to do is delta will actually be equal to. Now, this can actually be represented in a cos format. And this will be equal to mu into cos of alpha into do. And this is going to be equal to mu into 2 into cos of alpha into dm. Because m is the midpoint of do. That's the reason why we've taken the point 2. Let us once again refer to the figure to clarify this particular point. So as you can see that M is the midpoint of D and O. Since M is the midpoint of D and O, DM is nothing but the thickness at this particular point. Remember the thickness in this case is going to change. It is not going to remain the same as for a parallel thin film. So here the thickness is going to change at each and every point. Continuing with the derivation further, your delta is going to be equal to mu into 2 into cos of alpha into dm and since your dm is nothing but your thickness, this is going to be equal to 2 into mu into t into cos of alpha plus we have missed out on one thing out over here. This is alpha plus r 
this is going to be equal to alpha plus r and this is going to be equal to alpha plus r. It is very important to note that when we actually practically do the experiment, we will see that it only amounts to only cos of alpha because r is very very small. So in this case delta is equal to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r into dm. And dm of course is t. So therefore this is going to be equal to we don't require dm over here because we have already substituted for dm at this point. So it's going to be equal to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r. So your expression is as neat as this 2 mu into t into cos of alpha plus r and this gives you the path difference. Having found out the path difference, let us label this as your expression 4. Having found out the path difference, the next thing is we want to know what is going to be the fringe width of my interference pattern. Or rather, I will also like to answer this question at what particular thickness I will get a dark band and at what particular thickness I will get a bright band. This means constructive and destructive interference. So let us see now, where is it that we are going to get these particular situations of constructive and destructive interference in the interference pattern produced due to a wedge-shaped film. So here is the expression delta is equal to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r. There is one more parameter that is going to go in this and this particular parameter is your delta is going to be equal to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r plus lambda by 2 because according to the Stokes theorem the ray R1 is actually getting reflected from a denser medium and that's the reason why it will suffer a phase difference of lambda by 2 or equivalent to pi. Hence we are going to add this particular value of lambda by 2. Let us call this expression as 4a. We know that the part difference is going to be an integral multiple of the wavelength for constructive interference and it is going to be a multiple of 2n plus or minus 1 lambda by 2 for the destructive interference. So since this is constructive interference, let us take the case of the constructive interference and we are going to equate this to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r plus lambda by 2 is equal to n into lambda. So this will be for constructive interference. Let us simplify this further and this is going to be equal to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r is going to be equal to n lambda minus of lambda by 2 which can be further simplified to 2 n minus 1 into lambda by 2 and this is going to be equal to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r is equal to this. so this is going to be the final expression for the constructive interference so at this particular thickness it will determine whether you are going to get a dark band or a bright band. Similarly, let us take this expression that is 4a and let us equate it to 2 mu t into cos of alpha plus r plus lambda by 2 is equal to you know that your delta which is going to be the part difference is going to be a multiple of lambda by 2 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2. So that is I am going to equate it to 2n minus 1 into lambda by 2 and this will be for your destructive interference. But let us see now what happens out over here. Of course you can either take plus or minus in this case we will take a plus over here. 
सो दिस इज टू म्यू टी इंटू कॉस ऑफ आल्फा प्लस आर सो वे गोइंग टू इक्वेट इट टू टू एन प्लस वन लैमडा बाई टू एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू टू एन इंटू लैमडा बाई टू एंड प्लस लैमडा बाई टू सो ओवर हियर यू गोइंग टू गेट कैंसल लैमडा बाई टू फैक्टर इज गोइंग टू गेट कैंसल एंड यू गोइंग टू हैव अ वेरी सिंपल एक्सप्रेशन टू म्यू टी इंटू कॉस ऑफ आल्फा प्लस आर इज गोइंग टू बी इक्वल टू एन लैमडा एंड दिस इज योर एक्सप्रेशन फॉर ऑप्टेनिंग द डिस्ट्रक्टिव इंटरफियरेंस सो दीज वैल्यूज ऑफ एंस और दीज वैल्यूज ऑफ द थिकनेस आर गोइंग टू गिव अस डिस्ट्रक्टिव इंटरफियरेंस सो इन दिस वे वी हैव ऑप्टेन्ड एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द कंस्ट्रक्टिव एंड द डिस्ट्रक्टिव इंटरफियरेंस दैट इज द प्लेसेस ऑफ द डार्क एंड द ब्राइट बैंड्स इन द वेज शेप्ड इंटरफियरेंस पैटर्न सिंस यू थैंक्स स्टूडेंट्स फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो Stay tuned to Ekira and do subscribe to our channel Ekira. Thanks a lot.